This is the third giant sunfish to wash up on an Oregon beach in a span of just a few months. So I decided it's time to consult an expert. Katherine Maslanikov is the fish collections manager at the Burke Museum. She has over 20 years of experience in her field and even has a snailfish named after her. So if you need, say, hundreds of herring from 1987. Hundreds of herring from 1987. This is the woman to call. When I asked if she had a sunfish, she said, come on down. This is our little sunfish friend. Due to storage constraints, we can't keep a fully mature sunfish. It's the heaviest bony fish. They can weigh over 5,000 pounds. So that's like a school bus. The really big ones, the ones that get to be 10 feet long, their eyes are like the size of a dinner plate. They also have the most eggs of any vertebrate animal. Hundreds of millions of eggs per female. If you've never seen a larval sunfish, they are ridiculously adorable, tiny little golf balls with spikes sticking out in all directions. So cute. Where are they coming from? They're in the open ocean throughout the whole world. Tropical to temperate. You know, they don't typically get much further north than here. There's a few records from Alaska. What do sunfish eat? They eat jellies, which is great because those are also just drifting throughout the ocean. So they're kind of just drifting around with their food. We do know, actually, they've been taking these really deep dives. Someone did a tagging study where they tagged a bunch of individuals and tracked them. And we're very surprised to find that they're getting down like 500 meters. Why? We don't really know. Maybe they're going down for some better quality food every now and then. There's these, you know, huge numbers of small little lantern fishes that live at, at greater depths. And so maybe they're just diving down for a better snack. They're not a fish that's designed for speed. And this is a very weird body plan. These fins are placed really far back on the body here. This is not actually a real tail. It's called the clavis, and it's kind of like a fleshy rudder. And not being very fast might mean they burn less energy and therefore can get bigger, but it does come with some drawbacks. They're heavily parasitized, so there's like this, oh, this whole fauna that is just for sunfish, like in the gills and on, on the body, all over the fins, in the mouth, on the eyes. And I think it's really just because they're so slow moving that all these parasites can really kind of grab hold. So they have this really crazy behavior. Most people have seen a sunfish up at the surface and they'll be on their side like this and it kind of looks like they're basking in the sun and they'll flap these fins around kind of calling attention to themselves and birds will come and land on them and eat their parasites. So this can be like a 10-foot raft out at the surface of the ocean and so birds have this nice little spot to hang out and, and yeah it's like a, a raft for them to catch a snack and clean off the parasites of the the sunfish. Why are they called sunfish? There's maybe two reasons. One is that they have that, you know, sort of circular body plan. So it, it's kind of like a sun shape. And the other is that we do mostly see them, the way people have mostly seen them has been at the surface and it looks like they're basking in the sun because they'll be on their side like that and it looks like they're kind of sunbathing. Do we eat sunfish? I don't know that anybody is currently eating them. Lots of parasites live both in their tissue and on the surface of their body. I don't think they'd be terribly appetizing, but it's a huge amount of food. There's a site on Catalina Island from middens, so from thousands of years ago. A midden is an archaeological garbage dump. You learn a lot about the people that were living there based on their trash. You can tell what species of fishes were being eaten. So there's a huge number of the little discs that support the tail, that weird fleshy tail of the sunfish. So someone was using sunfish for something thousands of years ago on Catalina Island, off California, off Southern California. What should I do if I find one? Get in touch with whatever state fish and wildlife agency. They'll have very obvious phone numbers listed on the web, and they'll have a, somebody who will respond and, and potentially come and pick it up and do a necropsy, try to understand how the fish died. What Did it strand itself or you know was it struck by a boat? They're not endangered, so they're not a, a species of great concern, but they're certainly interesting, and everybody always loves to, to learn more about them when we find them. Anything else I should know? The one crazy thing about sunfishes is that they are the most recent branch on the tree of life of fishes. So they are sort of the pinnacle of fish evolution, which is <laughs> kind of a crazy thing because they're so weird. Ah!